Hey guys, welcome to the Scholar Online YouTube channel, the channel that is all about learning. Of course, in this video here today, we're going to be covering some of the developments that came out of Dev Day that happened on the 6th of November. Really, really, really exciting stuff, all right? So if you want to get a nice summary version of everything that happened and everything that was released, you are at the right place, all right? And because we are a development channel and a software programming channel, of course, we're going to end of this lesson with a very very quick sort of you know a, a tutorial on how to update your code because the api has changed completely of course your code is still going to be working right now as is but they're going to be deprecating some of the old things in the next couple of months and weeks so obviously the sooner you update your code the better and some of the benefits that come with the new changes are going to require you to update your libraries and update your code so the sooner you do it the better we're going to cover that right toward the end of the this video right so before we get started just remember to like like this video please leave us a comment if there's something that you want to engage us on and of course remember to subscribe to our channel so that you will be notified every time that i release a new video right here okay so the page that I'm on basically covers what I'm going to be discussing here today, but I've summarized it nicely, nicely for you. So this is what we're going to be covering in this lesson. First of all, we're going to go through all the changes that have been introduced. This is really, really groundbreaking stuff. And after we go through all those changes, I'm going to, at the end of the video, of course, show you very, very quickly how to update your libraries so that you're able to take advantage of these changes, all right? So one of the biggest ones, and I think this is going to be exciting for so many people, is the content length because this has been a limitation for so long with some of the models we've been building and you know out there clients asking us but why is the message is always getting cut off in the middle because the content length is limited right so the the maximum content length you could have gotten was 16k with um gpt uh, of 316k i think uh but now we can that that has been increased all the way to 128k what does that mean that basically means i think where's the content k there it is that basically means that um you know when you're generating content you will not be limited it doesn't mean that the content generated would have automatically be longer right obviously the content generated depends on the prompt that you give the model but for the same prompt where you used to get prompts getting cut off in the middle because I mean a, a content being cut off in the middle because it was not because you ran out of tokens that will no longer be the case all right you will be able to get you know the entire 128k if that was part of what the model was already generating okay so this is really really exciting and this is available on the gpt4 turbo model and um you know the gpt4 1106 preview model which um is currently available for you to access if you have you know um you know api access to that right and one thing I want to mention as well is that um, I haven't put it in my list yet, but the prices for the new models, which operate better than the older models, has also been decreased. Okay, so GPT-4 used to be quite expensive. I'm going to like show you the pricing page. All right, so let's go to the uh, OpenAI pricing page. OpenAI pricing. It's very important to understand pricing if you're going to be building, uh, you know, production level applications because, you know, it might sound like a few cents, but when you're having thousands of requests, they add up to quite a bit, right? So GPT-4 Turbo, this is the new model that has been released. There are two versions of it. There is the 106 uh, preview, and then there is the uh, 106 vision preview, all right? We're going to get to what all of those mean, right? And the GPT-4 uh, costs, uh, this is the old version that if you've been using GPT-4, you had GPT-4 and up to GPT-4-32K. GPT-4 costs not per not not $3 per thousand tokens this cost not per not not one per thousand tokens what this means is this is about 30 percent the price of that however what you need to notice is even though this is a third the price of that this is still orders of magnitude more expensive than if you used 3.5 turbo because 3.5 turbo is not per not 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 one per thousand tokens so keep that in mind and i've tried both 3.5 turbo and gpt4 turbo i can tell you with respect to the output that the, the output is not that much more i mean it is better with four but it's not worth 
10 times the price, right? And you get pretty decent responses with 3.5 Turbo. So if you can use 3.5 Turbo in your application and you can see that the 3.5 Turbo model that has been updated is um, not preview because the one on GPT-4 is preview, which means this is not quite ready for for production yet i wouldn't put this on my production application if i was updating my model we are going to be updating our models with um 3.5 turbo 11 or 6 which is also new and works with the new api right so all the code i'm going to show you today will be on this model because it is significantly cheaper even though this is cheaper than that this is way cheaper than that and once we've made these changes and later on you want to update your model to four um you won't need to do too much uh, changes you'll just you know change the actual model name from that to this all right so that's why i wanted to cover the pricing at this point because i think it's important to understand the differences between all the different models and what's available all right so in future tutorials and that's why you should stay subscribed we will cover working with vision and we'll cover all of these other new models that are uh, that have been created but today we're going to focus on this one because we're going to specifically focus on how to update the old code that you would have had to the new one so that at least you're functioning with a new api and then later tutorials we will do much much more all right so the first thing we've covered content length yes this is amazing amazing wonderful news i am so excited about the content length all right so that's done what's the next big thing json mode and reproducible outputs oh my gosh you know when i saw this i was watching the video i was like literally so so excited specifically about json mode why why if you're doing coding and development with openai api you would understand the concept of deterministic versus non-deterministic outputs right we've covered this in previous tutorials what this means is AI models, are, specifically OpenAI, are not deterministic by nature, which means you could ask it the same question, the exact same question, without even changing the prompt, the temperature, anything, and you will get a different response. That is what non-deterministic means, right? If a mo Of course, you could adjust the temperature to get more and more deterministic, but even then, right when it comes to more complex outputs like when you specifically want to output json um you wouldn't get the exact same structure of json and if the output is actually feeding into another part of your application and you needed a structure to be a certain way you have a problem and 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 this has been the case for a lot of the applications i've built where i'm trying to let's go to the code i'm trying to input a completion and I want the output over here to be in JSON format because I'm going to use this output in another part of my application, you know, to feed into something else or my application is huge and I'm trying to build maybe agents or stuff like that, right? So this is for more complex development. It was really, it was possible. I was able to do it and maybe we'll cover this. We'll do a prompt engineering you know, course. Just remember, remind me in the, in the comments where you could design your prompt in such a way that you could almost guarantee to get a, 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 a JSON output in the structure that you want. But that included a lot of prompt, I call it prompt gymnastics, all right? It's not even prompt engineering anymore. It's prompt gymnastics because you had these long prompts where you even giving examples to the AI on this is how the output should look. But even with that, sometimes it still hallucinates and does something opposite to what you've given it. So this was really, really a challenge, right? And of course you could fix this with working with functions, but that's not really the, the, the functionality of functions. And we'll get to that. You know, what you really wanted was a normal call that just outputs a, a very structured json output the way you want it and you want it to be the same every time you call that function so now that's possible right that's possible so if you go to um to the documentation and i'll try in the description of the video to to to, to write the video description with these titles and and different parts and links to where you can get information about all these things i'm talking about so if you're watching the video and there's a timestamp that says json mode 
I will try and put a, you know, a link under there so that you can go and find specifically where that JSON mode is, right? So we're going to improve also how we write our descriptions to our videos to make it easier to navigate. So if you come over here and you look for text generation and and you go under json mode that's where it is you'll see you can specify type json as a you know as an input inside of your of your you know of your uh, completion uh call and guarantee that you're going to get a json output of course you have to still include it in the prompt right and still give it a structure of what the structure must look like but by adding this extra variable you restrict the the model to only output json and the model will never output anything else okay so there are two steps to this and i i can't cover that today uh perhaps in the future videos because i'm going to create an entire new uh you know lesson where we are going to go through all these things and um and, and 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 update all of them it's not possible to do it in one in one in one video but today just know that from now you can actually get structured json outputs and i'll show you how just subscribe and remember to uh to stay updated on on this and then reproducible outputs i'll also show you this but um from from my investigation since this came out on the sixth is that this reproducible outputs are you know, they, you know, you have to give the same prompt, you have to give the same uh, temperature settings and all of that in the in the call. And then you give it a what they call a seed parameter, you know, and the seed parameter can be any random number. You know, you don't the number is irrelevant as long as you use the same seed parameter every time you make the same API call with the same input. So this means you need to have the same um, sort of, you know, prompt. So this is if somebody asks the same question, it must give the exact same answer. So this is different from from what you want here. What you want here is you want a same structure, but somebody the prompt could be different. So I could ask a different question, but the the structure of the answer would be would follow the same JSON format every time. However, here, um, if I ask the same question, if I say what the price of Bitcoin, and then tomorrow I ask what's the price of Bitcoin right it must give me the exact same answer it gave me yesterday so what this is what reproducible outputs is all about you understand so um we'll cover that in future tutorials uh but this is just one of the things that the function parallel function calling this is a bit confusing when i first learned about this i thought hmm, what does this mean this mean does this mean that i can call multiple functions at the same time but actually this was always possible right this means something else so if you go to function calling and the documentation doesn't cover this it took me a while to actually understand what exactly they're talking about here so if you go into function calling right there's an example they give here for parallel function calling all right there it is okay and this example if you look at it um it's got the tools and it's got you know it looks like the old function calling as if they've renamed the functions to tools right but this is not what it is and i, I was confused with this the first time i read it but the old function calling still works the exact same so if you wanted to do function calling the way we did it I'll show you in future tutorials, even with the example today, it will still work. You just have to update the library, right? Parallel function calling is a new, but you could still call parallel functions. Like you could call, this is not parallel, this is multiple. You could call multiple functions in the same call, which means you could have a function and then another function, because this function was a list of JSON objects, you could have three, four, five, six different functions. That's not parallel functions, that's multiple functions. So you could have like 10, 20 different functions in one call. That is still a single, not parallel, but multiple in one call. What parallel means is you could, instead of outputting one function result, you can output two, three, four function results. And then... You take those function results and feed them further to refine your thing. So this 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 is applicable where you have functions that are that maybe you need to call both of them. You know, so you need to call function one and you need to call function two, and then you want the results of both functions at the same time. Because before, um, if you had ten functions in the same in the same um, you know uh, multiple function uh, objects, it would only return one. So the function calling would return one function that most fits the user question 
or, 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 or prompt. But you could have two functions that are that you want to call both at the same time. So you want to call this function. I can't think of an example out of head, but the use case is you've got this function and you've got another function. And based on the user response, it's possible that both these functions are valid, right? And maybe you need to do two things at the same time. Maybe you need to send an email and send a tweet. So for example, somebody asks, you know, please record this for me in my database and, and, and you have a function for calling uh, the database to save that. And then you got another a fun a function that then uh, notifies the, the, the user that um, we have saved this thing in your database. And then you got another function that says, okay, now we're going to tweet what you've done. And these are three functions. Initially, you would have to call function, the first function and do it, and then do another API call for the second function and do it another one. But now, if they are both relevant to the scenario, you could call all of them and 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 and, and sort of like pr process them at the same time. That's what parallel function calling is. This is huge. This is huge for building much more complex applications because I think the changes that are coming out of AP, out of this new thing is going to catapult into the future our ability to do to build to build really complex apps with ai right so this is what it is and with with parallel function calling you'd be using tools you know and tools is like a list of objects right at first glance these tools look similar to what we, what we used to have as functions right but it's not and i think that's what's confusing about the documentation because now under function calling they only provide the example for parallel they no longer have that example for the normal function calling because they should have had though so that you could see the difference that the normal function calling you still say functions goes to a list and the function object is different from the tools object Object. The tool objects has got a type and a function, but the function object is still the old function object we used to work with, right? So they are actually different things. And in the in, in when you do the API call, you would say tools is equal to tools if you have tools, and then if you had functions, you could say functions is equal to functions. I mean the opposite of that. So you're either going to use tools or functions. You can't use them both at the same time. All right. So you must decide. You're either calling functions or you're calling tools. But they are different. What I want to mention is that these are actually different objects. All right. Cool. Now that's exciting. We'll cover that in a future tutorial. We'll do this definitely. This is on our to-do list. Everything that I've put on this list. Um, stay subscribed to our channel. We will cover in a future tutorial. We can't possibly cover all of it in one day, especially with the coding, right? Multimodal visual TTS. I mean, from the day that ChatGPT could see and you could update on the actual ChatGPT platform, upload images and stuff and, and code interpreter, I've been waiting for it to come to the API. I knew it would come eventually and open a promise. It is finally here, but of course it's preview mode. So you can actually take it to production um safely at this stage but you can definitely start working and building with it and start learning and of course we're going to build these tutorials on uh, showing you how to actually do some of these things in the future first one is visual what is visual visual means you know ai vision these complex ai models i've been i've been looking for an ai vision model for so long but i wasn't going to pay some of these prices out there or even try to build my own i was just waiting for open ai to finally release one on the api and it's finally here what does this mean this means with vision let's go back to um where we were with uh text generation and 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 chat completion uh no i think vision is over here there you go what does vision mean vision is in the costing it's this is that uh, this is how much the costing costs you have to pay for the tokens all right and then you're gonna pay for the 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 the, the 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 image as well so you can enter the pixels over here and see how much it's gonna cost you so you're gonna pay for processing the image and you're gonna pay also for for this and then you will need um to use this model of course so obviously um i will also show in a, in a future tutorial how to actually use functions so that when somebody is chatting and then they upload an image to switch between this model and that model, because sometimes, you know, you don't want to like, especially when you're doing a chatbot, you want to be able to, 
to sort of to to know what the per, the person is asking for and if this person is actually trying to talk about a picture they've uploaded then you want to go check your upload and find the picture so there needs to be a way to sort of move between these but we'll cover that in the future for now just know that this is what the vision uh, thing looks like use cases for this is um, somebody takes a picture of a plant, you could build an app for that where gardening apps, I've seen a lot of those, um, people don't, you know, you've got a plant that you don't know how to take care of, take a picture, send it to the AI and have the AI analyze a picture and, and, and find all the information there is about that plant and, and, and give you tools around how to, you know, uh, care or take care of that plant. And another use case that's out there is take a picture of your food and get uh, AI to recommend a recipe. There's so many things you can do with vision. But for me, one of the things I can foresee right now, which I'm going to implement in our application is take a picture of a business card and have that information saved in your CRM or have a contact card sent to you. I mean, this is like, there's so much, you can, so much you can do with this. Take a picture of anything that you can analyze, even documents. So take a picture of an ID copy, you know, those applications where, you know, the, the, the K, K, KYC apps, where a lot of people that were building K, know your customer apps, or where they had to, um, you know, uh, you always use a third party API to, to, to analyze ID copies, all of that goes away because now you can manage it yourself, you know? So you just say, hey, please upload a picture of your ID and they upload a picture of your ID and you can use a vision to analyze the ID, get the contact, the name, the whatever from, from the ID and, and, and any other information that you can get from that to verify that this ID is valid if you have APIs to be able to verify an ID, but at least you can get now the information of a picture. So this is really, really groundbreaking. I've tested this not with the api yet i'm planning to do that with api but i've tested this on the on the, on the online and it works really well like to upload imagine uploading a receipt and being able to take all of that information and and putting it in your in your expense uh reports and things like that there's just the possibilities are endless with vision right there's there's a lot we're going to do with vision in this channel um, and just stay updated and, and I'll give you some nice pro, pro portfolio projects that you can do and, and, you know, and, and show off TTS. Oh my gosh. TTS. Oh, thank you. Open AI for TTS. I don't know. It's like some Altman was reading my mind. I feel like he is into, he was reading my mind. TTS. Oh gosh. Oh my gosh. Where do I start with TTS? What is TTS? TTS is, um, text. Can you see my excitement? I mean, I was so excited watching that, <laughs> that dev day. Obviously, if I could have flown to San Francisco for it, I would have, you know, I'm based in South Africa, but of course, you know, I was able to watch it on YouTube, but oh my gosh, I was like literally jumping up and down the whole time because I was so excited. TTS, you know, TTS is one of those things that cost so much money right now, specifically if you want to use an API. And a lot of the guys that have had these TTS models, they charge so much, you know, I'll show you a, a website. Like, um, I think I used to use play HT. I just <laughs> actually just canceled my subscription. I literally, I'm not, I'm not kidding you. I just canceled it this week, generating AI voices because in my application, what I do is that, um, some of my apps that I build, you know, I want to do like tutorials, how to tutorials, and I want to create a video for it, you know, uh, while I'm taking screenshots of what's going on and then I want the voice to talk in the background I don't want to use my own voice because I want to use a standard voice and I also want to be able to produce bulk You know because I don't have the time to you know, so there are so many use cases for this and and before PlayHT was one of the best because I've checked so many some of the free Models out there have terrible sounding voices, you know, like hello I am generative AI voices indistinguishable from humans, you know Terrible voices. Even Python has got a uh, TTS library, by the way. You know, people will say, oh, no, but, um, you know, Python has had a TTS library for a long time, but I've used this. It's terrible. This is one of those, hello, my name is Bertha from Scholar Online. You could, it just sounds like an AI and it sounds terrible. And if you really want a more realistic, you know, TTS um, I actually use this, but the problem with this is that they don't have an API. You have to like, I think they do. Uh, and the pricing is, look at that pricing. I think I was paying 79, the, the price has actually gone up. The price has gone up. I was paying 25, this was 20 something and TTS is flipping expensive. And it's expensive because there is use cases for it out there, 
right? So now, now you can just call the API with TTS and you pay cents on the, I mean, look at the pricing of OpenAI. So let's go back to the pricing and go to the bottom and look for the TTS pricing. Do they have it here? Um, there you go. Look, uh, per thousand characters, not per, not, not one five. This is like, and this is pay as you go. This is what I love, you know, because some of these things are like monthly, whether you're using the thing or not. I used to have the subscription because it was easier to have the subscription than pay when you need it and then stop paying. Then this month I have like hundred videos. I need to subscribe, transcribe, you know, for my websites. And then next three months I'm not using it, but I'm paying $79 a month, you know, I mean, these people have been taking us to the cleaners. Thank you, OpenAI, for getting Play HD out of business, right? And now, all I need to do is I just pay for what I use when I need it. So when I need 1,000 characters, I pay 0.015. When I don't need it, and you can get the HD, which is a little bit more expensive, and I think it's got better voices. And within your application, you can get people to decide, and they can pay for it, and you can charge maybe not $79, maybe $30, and still make a huge profit right and still out price uh, play HD and still be rich okay so TTS is amazing text to speech oh we'll do a video on this just stay tuned we'll a lot of these things we'll do a video on it and we'll do like a you know we'll do a use case sort of like a portfolio project for all of these applications uh, even if they are separate apps we're gonna do all of them in this channel now we've got lots of content to cover us for the next I don't know three months you know daily three Dale 3 is still works just like Dale. And um, if you look at the pricing over here, um, I think Dale pricing is, is there. So I'll, I've got, Dale is probably the only thing I'm not too excited about. I'll be honest. I'm, I'm not here. I'm not getting paid by OpenAI. I'm, I'm sharing stuff that I love, all right? So Dale 2, Dale 3 is a little bit more expensive than uh, Dale 2. There is Dale 2 HD. And, and, and so you could decide whether you want to use this or you want to use HD, which is, which is even more pricing. But this is, this is like, you can, this is a huge resolution of an image, right? A, big, a good quality. Personally, I'm still not going to use Dane because um, I'm on, I'm on actually stable diffusion. As far as images go and API images go, I think OpenAI is still behind and, and stable diffusion is better. I'll just be honest with you there, right? If you look at uh, stable diffusion Excel pricing, um, it is still much, much better. You know, like this is still uh, stable diffusion. They charge per number of steps. So I'll just go with 50 steps because it just does a better job, right? You're still paying with the latest model, which is stable diffusion XL 1.0. You're still paying not per, not, not three per, per image. And this is really great quality. This is like even better levels than their Dali 3 HD, right? Like, you must have a look at what stable diffusion can do. I'll, I'll demonstrate to you in the future. Stable diffusion is slowly reaching the levels of my, you know, mid journey. Not quite, but it, depending on, on, on the prompt, depending on what you're looking for, your own stable diffusion is maybe 80% of mid journey now. You know, mid journey is still one of the best, but they don't give an API. So stable diffusion is the next best thing. And, um, for generating images within, I mean, the XL version is top notch. So I would say, um, I love that they, they've got this and they've included this. And I feel like OpenAI has got better image models because if you actually go into the, um, you know, the other browser, the, 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 the Windows browser, the one way uh, they do the, um, uh, what is it? Where they do the, um, the Windows browser where, where you can do like, you know this the edge browser the microsoft the microsoft browser they've got an image generation tool there which is way better than dali but it's it's the same team that produces so i feel like they're, they're short changing us on 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 the image i think they've got better capabilities i mean if they can do all these tts's that they're doing and i think they're short changing us on this if the world diffusion can produce way better models than them you know i think they they they, they they're holding back you know, I, in my opinion, I think they're holding back. Maybe they want us to go and use <laughs> the, the online versions and, and stuff like that. But anyway, that's my two cents uh, when it comes to DALE 3. Um, and then assistance API. I think this requires an entire, not even an entire lesson. This requires a whole, 
you know, tutorial, you know, lesson after lesson for, for, for assistance, right? Because there's a lot, there's a lot. And I, th I feel like they're just beginning to, to start working on the assistance. I have a feeling like more is still coming, which is why I'm actually, they're still in beta. And I still feel like there's a lot happening and there's a lot that's coming to the point where I'm almost, I almost want to do all the other things you know, and give it like a month or so, because I get a feeling in a month, even the assistant APA will look completely different because it's still early days. It's still very early days. And I'm excited about what you can do with the assistance API. So the assistance API, I think it's a whole different way of doing the, the AI work. It's not chat completion because everything we've discussed so far is, is chat completion, except for obviously the TTS and, and text submission, all of that. Uh, assistance is a completely different uh, object within the API. It's a completely different library, and it works with threads. It works with, uh, you know, with messages. There's message object, thread objects. You can see over here. There's run. There's message thread, assistant, run step. There's 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 parts to this whole thing to try and help you build uh, AI agents. So the whole point is that you can create an agent which has a specific function and capabilities. This is where the GPTs are gonna come in. And this agent, you can define a, a purpose for it. And by defining a, after defining a purpose for this agent, you can have a thread, you know, of messages. And within this thread, messages fit into the into the thread. And then you can run these messages. And the assistant has got a memory of based on the thread and its purpose. At any point, it always knows what it was created for, what it's trying to achieve, right? It, it has a, the complete thread, which means it has, it remembers uh, your previous questions and its previous responses. So the way we do chat, the way we call um, uh, chat completion, we actually have to store the messages in our own databases. And when we call API, the API, we have to supply it with the messages you know, we have to supply it with a history of the messages and then the API has to then see what it said before and what you reply to it and blah, 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 and try to, re to remember where it is in the conversation so that it can continue the conversation. So every time it's not giving you a completely new response, right? This is us managing the message thread ourselves. But with the assistance API, the message thread is going to be managed within the within the the, the assistant itself, not by you. The, and the reason for that is that the thread is part of how the agent is going to work. You know, it's part of how the agent is going to be able to remember what it, you know, what its purpose is, what it has said, so that it always moves towards its purpose. So the key is defining the purpose of this of this thing and 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 the messages in the thread. And then over and above that, um, there is then um, the tools that the assistant is going to work with. So this is the sort of the structure and the architecture of the assistant. But then within the architecture of the assistant, you're going to have specific, I don't know what they're called, the tools or, you know, I don't know if that's the right word, right? And these are things that the assistant uses to achieve its purpose. So this could be, this is where you're going to have the, you know, the, you know, the retrieval, you know, uh, functionality. I think there's two of them retrieval functions. And the third one is the code interpreter. So these are, so it's a code interpreter is coding, you know, so you can define a code interpreter as one of the tools that it can use uh, to, to, to achieve its purpose. So which means it's writing Python code to get it closer and closer to its purpose while watching the thread and the messaging that you're giving it, right? Otherwise it could be the retrieval. The retrieval is, is, is where you give it uh, documents and data, and it will be using that as, to, as a tool to constantly move towards its purpose and uh, while keeping track of the thread. And the third one is obviously functions. You could use functions as well, define functions to help it, uh, you know, so it has those three for now, right? So here is some examples on how to do this, and we'll cover this in the future, and files. So you can upload files. I mean, if you think of your... Llama index, I was talking to a colleague earlier this week and I was saying Llama, Llama, you know, the whole Llama uh, index, right? Dead in the water, dead, dead in the water, dead in the water. I mean, probably there's still going to be a use case for this, but um, everything that 
you but maybe this will be useful for other language models because what i like about llama index is that they actually use um you know the open air is just one of the models they use but you could use any of the, any other language model to 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 create a structure but if you think about open ai some of the things we used to do talk to pdf you know uh breaking down vector databases embeddings all of those things uh, fall away. We don't need all of that anymore, which was such a hassle. I remember some of the tutorials, which used to be four hours long, how to create your own chat GPT with your own data, right? Now creating your own chat GPT with your own data is so simple. You can even do it on the actual, you know, chat GPT website itself, you know, which I can do a video for in the future. But with coding, it's so simple. You're going to just use a, an assistant. That assistant is going to have um we'll get to these but it will have it will be using retrieval and for for that you can just upload the files you know py and there's there's so many types of files you can upload i think over here they show you um the uh, let me open this in a new window so i don't close that they show you the two oh yeah so tools is the right word right because i was <laughs> using the word tools so this is a code interpreter you'll be able to you know to use code interpreter within your assistant um, knowledge retrieval you can use knowledge retrieval um, within your assistant and and from and and based on this it looks like these tools whether it's retrieval it's it's a it's a list of tools you know so I'm, I'm curious to test that you can use multiple tools right you can use a function retrieval and code interpreter in the same tool i'm so excited to like build uh stuff that i'm going to be showing you guys uh, this is gonna, I'm so excited. Like I look at this code, I want to jump. I want to create the video now, but I'm still working on, I'm so busy this week, just working on updating my old code because suddenly it's, it didn't break, right? It still works, but of course we need to capitalize on this and be first to market. So I'm so busy with that, but I promise you guys, I will be building these examples because I'm also learning as I'm updating my own code and some of the things I'm learning, I'm sharing with you so that you can also be on top of things and yeah, stay updated. Uh, this is your one place to, to, to know exactly how all of this works. So the supported files, I mean, wow, right? Um, text, CPP, CSV documents uh docx html which means it can understand html code and it can probably produce it so it can understand html code and it can produce html code there goes your you know your ai website builders right do you see it do you see it do you see it, it can you ai website builder i'm gonna that is a, i'm gonna build that gpt and um when you just tell it what kind of website you want and boom html right uh, it can output HTML, um, PowerPoint presentations, right? It can input, it can output PowerPoint presentations, uh, Python. If, if, you, if you can understand Python and you can understand um, HTML, maybe you can do web applications. Who knows, right? I'm excited. I'm excited at what's possible. Images, okay, it can output images, but it can in, in, take in images, okay? So it can take in CSS. It can output CSS. It can take in all of these stuff. It can take in uh, zip files as well. So if you have a zip file, you can feed it a zip file and 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 so forth. But but this is the things. Oh no, sorry. This is not input and output. I'm 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 being idiot idiotic. This is retriever and interpreter. Okay, all right. This is all input, not output. I don't know why I thought this was output. This is all input and code interpreter and retrieval retrieval is obviously being able to store your own data to build chat gpts with your own data right so this is like a repository this is like what we used to do with embeddings and vector databases and you know all of building your own chat gpt with your own data that's this is that right so now with retrieval you can you can you can you can add all of these things powerpoints documents python scripts html plain text uh i see there's no videos and stuff like that but Videos and MP3s and all of that. The way I see it, you know, you can use other other tools to 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 to, to you know to extract the text out of your out of your MP3s and things like that. You can even use Whisper to then transcribe, um, yeah, to transcribe the 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 text. I mean the the sound the MP4 to text, and then you can input the text. So there's ways around other file formats. You know, where I don't see PDF yet. A PDF should be here. I'll be surprised if it's not there. 
there you go application pdf it's there php and then this is interpreter interpreter means so now within the interpreter you could input an image so this would be different from vision because vision is inputting the image into into gpt4 for chat completion purposes but here you can input a, an image into code interpreter for programming so let's say it was a, a picture of a I'm, I'm actually curious to try this out uploading bank statements right a, a, a pdf of bank statements and saying can you create for me financials financial reports because it requires some programming calculations taking those bank statements minus and adding them up and then structuring it into a um uh, a format and of course you can output it in in html or in text format and then create the document yourself that's not important if it can output an actual word document i don't think it, it's it's able to do that um yeah cool so this is really exciting stuff guys very very exciting so um this is an entire you know lesson and 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 you know you're not even lesson series of lessons that we will cover in this channel for sure custom cheat gpt and gpt store i mean this is simple i'm not going to cover it because i don't want to open my chat gpt but you know this doesn't have anything to do with programming this is where you know on the chat uh the chat box the the chat bot the the front end chat uh chat gpt you can build your own custom gpt and other people can build their own custom gpts and you'll build your own custom and you can even do it without coding because you can do it like with a no code builder but where you, but you still have to specify the logic and upload the documents yourself so you can build a custom gpt to to i mean to anything from teaching you how to write reports to you know it's it, i mean whatever you can do with assistants and agents you can do it but with the no code that's what the gpts is and then you define your gpt when you're done with it and then you can publish it to, it to the store where other people can use your gpt and the nice thing that um some argument promised is those people that build the, the amazing gpts which get used more or will you know like uh, open air will share Will share revenue with them you know so this will be like a, you know like a normal app store way you know if your app is being used you know and people in and, and chat gpt is making money out of people using your your, your tech that they'll be they're, they're not they didn't specify the details of it but i think you know if you can think about really innovative i think your chat your talk to pdfs are all going to be on top of everything already but it's not really important anymore because chat gpt can now do it directly without requiring an assistant but i'm thinking around you know um, really complex things like helping you plan your trip, for example, where you can, you know, um, input data from the internet and output, you know, uh, itineraries and things like that. And imagine if you can build that into an assistant that, that you can do a GPT for that, you know, and then people use it and you make lots of money. So, uh, things that people do on a regular basis that you can, you know, build AI, uh, agents for. Yeah, definitely try it out. I'm, I'm going to be building a GPT or two. I don't want to share it on the channel because I don't want people to go and do it uh, before I do it. Okay. First of market is going to be very, very important. You know, I remember with those days of the, uh, what do you call them? The, 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 the GPT, uh, they're not, they're not going to be so popular anymore, but like the, the plugins, the days of the plugins, remember the, the plugins that came to, went to market first stayed at the top, right? They, 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 they became the most popular and they remained the most popular. So who, the people that will be first to build the custom GPTs are going to be the ones that will benefit the most. Okay. Now, um, let's get to the coding. Uh, as I promise, uh, the end of the video, we're going to, um, just show you very quickly how to, uh, update your code. Because if you look at the documentation now, the code is completely different. What I want to draw attention to is first of all, you, the SDK has moved to version one. The SDK we've been using was version zero, right? It's now version one. It's not just a simple upgrade because even the, the, the upgrade, the version one doesn't have the same functions as the, as the old version. So your code will break when you, when you upgrade it and you can, you need to migrate, you need to migrate it. And there's a way that they provide a migration guide. Uh, but personally, I think you're the only one who understands your code best. And I always love to migrate these things manually so that I can understand what I'm doing and I can understand the migration and then I can understand what the new code is doing and how it's different from the old one. Understand? So personally, I like to migrate it manually to understand the new API. Right? So you see over here that 
the way they call open AI. Remember we used to call, you know, we should just say import open AI. And then we would say API dot API key. Let me just show you here. The old way of doing it was you would just say import open AI. And then you would specify your API key. So this is my API key. It's a real valid API key, which I'm going to delete after this video. So it will not be there anymore. But I needed to show you for the purposes of this video. But in real code, you wouldn't write your API key like this. You would put it as an environment variable or you would save it in a different file called config, which you would git ignore. You know, you would make sure you protect your API key that it doesn't get out there. Uh, but for simplicity purposes, I just have it here so that it's so that you can see everything in one place, what exactly I'm doing. So this was the old way we used to initialize OpenAI. You used to have the API key and you would put it like that and then you would say OpenAI to API key and you specify it and that would initialize the, the OpenAI library with the key and every function you call after that would be this would, would, would work. And this was a global initialization, right? So this was like initializing the API globally. So one of the things that they've, they've changed completely is this is no longer how you initialize OpenAI, which I actually like the newer way of doing it because they're using clients. So, so you, so you, you, you initialize a client and you can do it locally within the, the, the function itself. So in this function, I can initialize the, the, the open AI with a key for this function. And it, it has a lot of benefits, you know, for programming, um, you know, it just makes sense to do it like that. Right. I can, I can understand why they started the global way before, because maybe, you know, you have to start some way and you can improve as you go. Right. So, so, so this is no longer the way if you have this, um, code, um, and it still works when you upgrade, the code is actually going to break and I'm going to show you here exactly what that is. So I've got my library running. All right. And I've got my file called new.pi. So if you do, if I open that file and I say new.py, this is the code that I've got in here. It's exactly the same code that I'm, I'm discussing with you. Um, there. So this is the old way we used to do it. We used to, um, initialize like that would have a system message and we'll start creating the messages list. Um, and then we would, add, would add the user message, right? But obviously if the conversation grows, you would record the user message and you, maybe you'd put it in a database and then you would remember what the, what the assistant responded. And then you would continue to increase the, 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 the list, um, with the, with the conversation so that open AI can follow the conversation. I'm not, that's not important for now. I'm just showing you the, the, the basic, the most basic one way of doing it. Now, what we do is we then append that, that, and then we would call the response, right? Which could have an exception. And I'm not going to cover the exceptions now. I'm just going to say except, but obviously there are different types of exceptions. And if you go through the documentation, you can see all the different exceptions. So you can sort of like catch each and every one of them and, and sort of react accordingly based on, on, on there's, there's a couple of things that can, that can, can, can cause an exception here. The first one is it could be a rate limit. You could have exceeded your, your rate that you have available on your API. It will throw an exception. The second one, the system could just be down, which is probably what happens most of the time with open AI system. It's, it's down a lot. You know, you call it, you call the API now it, it, right, it goes through and you call it later. The system is done and it throws an exception, right? And there's other, other things, malformed, you know, um, uh, request, uh, not, you know, not having the right, you know, requirements. And there's many things I can call and cause an exception, which you can sort of cover for all of them in here within your exception. But I'm not going to go into that. For now, I'm just going to, you know, very, very basic. This is what we used to have before. We used to have open AI completion create. You would specify the model that you're working with. And the last time, this is the model that I think was the latest, but now there's definitely new models. And, and you can see all the models here where I was showing you where the pricing is. You can see what all those different, but now the old models are not here. These are the new ones, but there's a page you can check the models, right? So this used to work. And I just want to show you that this works, all right? So let's say I'm going to import this file. I'm going to run Python shell by just saying Python. Okay. So Python shell is not running. So let me, um, start my, the ENV first, cause I have everything in the ENV, right? So I would say source ENV, I've uh, been activate. And then you can see the, the ENV over there. And then I can say Python. So now I'm on the Python shell and then I can just import, import this function, right? I can just import this function. I can say from um, new. 
no old from old import or just import everything from old import and it will import and then i need to just specify the text right so let's find a question we can ask and we'll ask the same question all right to both the models and see the responses so the question is what is photosynthesis question mark right so let's put this question here so that we remember the questions that we asked right put it at the bottom there that's the question and then we'll wait for the response and to get the response we just sort of run the model with the text okay we just because we've imported it there we just run it with the text and wait for a response okay it's very quick um that's the other thing why i actually still love using 3.5 you know i get some of my clients like you know but bertha you're overcharging us for or you're charging us a lot but you're just using the old model and people feel like think they need to upgrade to four because um that's the latest thing is like always having to buy the latest iphone unfortunately with open ai models actually 3.5 works just as good as four but a tenth of the price you know and and i'm a i'm a practical person so um there's no reason for me to to uh, to, uh, to sort of you know to get a more expensive model so this is this is the response is a process by which plants and some organizations convert sunlight carbon dioxide into glucose sugar oxygen this process takes whatever whatever and explains what photosynthesis is all right so this is the response with the first model now we're going to exit out of this sorry and i'm going to clear this and then i'm going to import new right so this is now the new way of doing it um I'll, I'll explain to you the difference the main the messages and the structure of the messages remains exactly the same so when you had the messages there you would build the messages exactly the same way you used to build the messages um the way you initialize the the the, the api is different you you don't just import open ai you say from open ai import this object open ai right and then you initialize the open ai object key with the api key right so you need to put the api key inside and you can initialize it at the point where you need to use it right you don't you don't need a global initialization anymore over here for all your functions you can initialize it within the function so you you initialize the client and then once you initialize the client then you're going to say a client the child dot completions was create it's slightly different wording you know as well we also has open ai dot tell completion of create so this is slightly different you know dot child dot completions dot create so you if you have code you must go update um this to that all right and and then you specify the model the way you used to specify the model and then the messages the way so so some of it is the, is the same and then the way we, this used to return a json object and you could just pass the json by passing choices at zero right and message and content right but now it actually create it returns not json it create it returns actual uh objects you no longer pass it like choices at zero like the way you would pass a json object of course, this response, which can be the completion, uh, is still dot choices at zero dot messages dot content. Still the same, actually. It's the response dot choices at zero dot message dot content. But not this is the JSON passing way of doing it, and this is the you know like the fa the, the the model or the function the, the passing. So this is when you're not passing it when you're actually passing into an object, right? So this is actually cleaner for Python actually, uh, and I like this better. Uh, and this, this is a, an actual great improvement, but the structure itself is different. So, uh, I mean, the structure remains the same. It's not different. The structure is the same. So actually, if you knew the structure is the same, you could just, you know, rewrite this and say response dot choices at zero dot message dot content. You understand? So that's what's different, right? What's different is how you initialize it's, 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 it's that as well. And then that's different. And then also how you get your response, right? So let's um, say, uh, and, and also this library, like I said, is also different because you'll see this is SDK 1.2, which is not uh, backward compatible, by the way. So if you upgrade to, um, to, to 1.2, the old code actually breaks. So this presented a challenge, especially when you're working within applications, because 
how do you test the thing? So obviously you're not going to test in your live application, of course, right? But if your application is not very big and, you know, you could possibly just create two different environments and, and have a test environment where you can test the new code. You understand? And because once you upgrade, um, the old code is going to break immediately because it's not backward compatible. Right. And I'll show you what I mean. So if I say now, let's uh, go back to Python. And then I say import new dot py um, from new import everything. Let's import everything from, um, you see, immediately when I try to import, it cannot import open AI from open AI, right? Because this old open AI didn't have this open AI object, right? So you might think, oh, I, I just need to upgrade the library. So let's exit out of here and, and do what's recommended there because they actually tell you exactly what to do here. Pip install upgrade open AI, right? So you come over here and you let's clear and you say uh, pip install upgrade open AI. You will see it will upgrade the existing AI that you had, the existing library to the new one. So you'll see over there that you have now upgraded to, you have, you have uh, uninstalled uh, 28.1. Uh, this was all the installation that we had over here and it has installed the new one, right? It's going to be in here somewhere, um, but it has installed the new one, right? So now after that is done and you now say Python, right? And you say uh, from OpenAI, import OpenAI like that, you'll see it works now without an issue. But if you try to do um, import OpenAI, if you try to say this, right, and then you define that, the API key, and then you uh, open API or API key, it'll work. And then you try to call this, this function, right? It's going to throw an error. All right, let me actually just call the function. Let me exit out of this so I can just call the function properly. So let's say Python and let's say from old, okay, from old import everything, right? Um, let's define oh, the text. Let's define the text and then let's run this. You see, it, it, it returned an empty thing because there was an exception here. There's an exception here because um, um, oh, this old function doesn't run anymore. If you actually removed this from the try to see the actual error, you will see you get an error. So basically what I'm trying to demonstrate here is that if you actually have a, a running application and then you upgrade to the new, you upgrade to the new uh, version 1.2, but you still have old functions that you have not, you know, changed those, it will break your code. So don't do it like that. Rather, um, use a test environment or a different environment completely import the new, um, by the way, you can you can uninstall this and go to the old version. There's a way. So if this breaks, it's not the end of the world. All right, you can uninstall um, OpenAI one point because actually this happened to me this week <laughs> because I didn't realize that it was going to break my code. I thought I could just upgrade like I we used to. I didn't realize that it's not backward compatible. So I had to actually backtrack and go to the older version. So once you have, uh, if you've installed it and by mistake and then everything broke, you can just uninstall. You can just say pip uninstall OpenAI and then you can go and install version 28 version 0.2028. So the version we, which, which we uninstalled, if you remember what it was, but if you actually look at the error code, you're going to get the error code actually shows you which version it is. You know, otherwise you can Google it and you can find it. I just don't know it from the top of my head. You can uninstall this one and reinstall the old version and then your code will work again. And then do the changes in a different environment. And then when you're, when you're done doing the changes, then upgrade everything at once.
so but i want to show you the new so let's exit out of here let's clear i'm exiting because the, the functions are called this they've got the same name so i don't want them to to be confused with each other so here we can say from new import everything so now when we put everything from new it works right and then we can define the text the way we define the text here okay uh, we can define what is hypersynth uh, and then uh, we can run this new you know this new variable function and you'll see uh, it's actually even faster right um it's even more detailed you know if you look at the response the response is much more detailed okay i love the re the response is much more detailed so so the new uh, uh you see this is longer if you compare it to that and much more cleaner i've compared it on multiple you know uh, tasks and i love the the, the improvements they've made to turbo 1106 so the old one was uh, turbo 0613 and turbo 1106 also i think has has a greater character you know like i can't remember the the limits i'm not sure if they're sh if they discussing it here um because i think this is just the new pricing not the old one anymore because they're encouraging everybody to move to gpt4 but i think for as long as they support gpt3 and it's a tenth of the price i'm going to stick with gpt3 and i will move to gpt4 when there's no longer gpt3 when they stop and i think they won't do it because what i've seen is that they always upgrading them both in parallel and just allowing people to choose which one they want okay but the 128k content is for the GPT-4 preview, right? Not for GPT-3.5. I think it's still more than the old GPT-3, but it's not as big as the 128 content. So if you want to write a book, for example, um, and and you know, and you could prompt it well enough to write an entire book, you know, you could do it with tribute because this this can cover writing an entire book, which you couldn't do before. All right, guys, so I think this is the end of, uh, I didn't think I would go for an entire hour, but yeah, this is all I have for you today. I hope you're, ex you're excited about all these changes. I will, as usual, like I said, I will, I will, you know, in future videos, cover some of this other, you know, we'll have different videos for each and every, uh, you know, uh, feature that has been added here. So we can go into, into more detail around these, these functionalities, but yeah, you know, thanks for watching and, and see you next time.